Welcome back y'all to Harmon Homestead. Today I'm in the raised bed. I'm here by my turnip greens. Let's talk about turnip greens and all you need to know how to grow these. So down here in the south, what we do guys is we broadcast these. What that means is take some seed in your hand, toss it, rake it over a little bit with a rake, you're good to go. They need to be planted very, very shallow. Now we do not thin ours out. We let them grow just as they so please because we're not interested in the turnip. We don't care about that. We want the green. So these have very, very little turnips here that forms on the bottom. See that? That's not what you want if you're growing turnips. If you're growing turnips, you need to thin these out. If you're just wanting greens, it's fine. Guys, these turnip greens will grow in clay. They will grow anywhere, okay? That's one of the hardiest vegetables and easiest to grow. Now, you need to watch for your soil being compacted if you are trying to grow turnips. You don't want to grow those in dense clay soil if you're trying to get a huge root on the bottom. Again, we don't care. We just want the greens. So what we do usually is come just pull these all up. We'll pull them up one watt at the time, but you can prune these back because you've got these little things growing here that are still going. And you don't even need pruners, guys. You can just snip it off the bottom like that. What we like to do is strip the leaf from the stem that way, okay? Now, turnip greens, everybody says you have to wash over and over and over and over. The reason being is because they will get little bugs and dirt like that one, okay? Usually it will be on the underside of the leaves. You have to wash these very, very well. Now, every year I usually freeze mine because we can't eat all of these in one serving. So what we'll do is I'll go inside, wash these, boil these for three minutes, put them in an ice bath for a couple minutes, drain them, put them in the freezer in Ziploc bags. Now that's what we do, okay? And they'll last us all winter long. Turnip greens are very, very easy. Now your older leaves, you need to get, okay? They get big, they start getting just worn down like that. That one looks like it may have a little virus. You need to get these, okay? And watch this. That's all you do. I mean, you literally could pull it off the stem. If it's been dry conditions, which it has been here, we're in a drought, you will see that the stem will crack like that. It will split open, they're dry, just dry as a chip. There's nothing much to it, okay? Nothing to growing turnip greens. Now I'm gonna pull some more leaves here. You can use pruners, you can do whatever. Just try to get your older leaves, if you want this to regrow. Now you can, you can pull it all up and be one and done. That's no trouble. But if you want to keep growing and reproducing leaves, and it will. Now, let me show you one here that's been kind of by himself a little bit more. He's got some old leaves on him. See a little bug there. They start getting these, okay? Your leaves will yellow at the bottom, that's normal. They just start dying back because you've got all these huge leaves taking in nutrients. If you're picking a mess of greens, like I am right now, you need quite a bit because they will shrink when you cook these inside. There's nothing to it, guys. Nothing to it. Got some little leaves here. Now, what we like to do is when we like to get these when frost hits them, it sweetens them up. These are very, very bitter. However, they're not as bitter as mustard greens. Mustard greens are, they're rough. Now I like mustard, that's just me, but usually turnip greens will please a crowd if they're into that kind of thing. They're just less bitter, okay? Cool nighttime temps, you want it down in the 40s. It's been in the 40s here, it was 42 this morning. So we're good to go, okay? You want these to be in cool weather so they will not be bitter and dry and parched. And I will tell you out of pure experience, if you know, start noticing purple, I'm trying to see here. I saw one while ago. If you see leaves that start having a dark purplish tint, to me, out of my experience, that's usually the ones that have been in the heat. You don't want that. See like him, I just left a couple and it'll grow back. Now technically you could cut him off at the nub and he still would grow back, but I'm not gonna do that. So let's talk about harvesting these. So the other day I did a video on planting by the signs. We got a great response from that. A lot of people had questions so they were going to look into it. We talked about getting a calendar that shows you 
what sign for each day, depending on whether it's a good day to plant, harvest, whatever. Today, I went to the store. I got this from Dollar General, the Old Farmer's Almanac for 2024. I always do. I just hadn't got one yet. Guys, this is all you need. You don't have to get a calendar, okay? Now, I got home and I got all kind of disturbed because it starts in September 2023 and it'll run through December 2024. So I said, let me see what today's sign is and see if it compared to online. Because I looked it up this morning. It said it was Sagittarius, which is not great for planting or growth. However, the moon is waxing. So pruning these turnips and leaving some stems on them We'll see if they do fairly well. It's not the best sign today, okay? It's not a barren sign, but it's not the best. But the moon is getting bigger, which means it will encourage growth if this stuff is true, okay? So I turn to November 2023. Today's Sagittarius online. I look and it says Scorpio for the 14th. I said, wait a minute, this is all messed up. So what that is, I started turning through the book. Turn to page 121. And it tells you, I, I've never paid attention to this before, I guess. It tells you about the signs right here. It tells you in the back every day next year that's good for planting. You don't have to try to figure it out. It tells you like planting root crops, planting above ground, what days it'll give you. Every month is explained in the back. You don't have to worry about figuring this stuff out. It tells you what to do. Right here is a calendar and it says today is Sagittarius for November the 14th. And they explain that they give you both. So as far as planting and harvesting, you need to look on this calendar because it is astrology. Astronomy is different and they give each month that sign, okay, for each day. But you need to look at this main calendar here if you're going to plant by the signs. It's on page 121. Don't look at the day-by-day -day physical placement of the moon of what it's in. That's physical. This is astrology, okay? This is old-timey planting by the signs but this is all you need it tells you when to cut firewood what day it tells you when to fish it tells you when to do whatever and you need to go off that okay in the very very back of the book it tells you all this it tells you day by day like january 1st a barren time kill weeds second great for you know planting whatever it does all the work for you you don't have to figure this stuff out okay so for everybody that i have talked to about planting by the signs this book's all you need. You don't need a calendar unless you just want one hanging on the wall. It tells you the moon phases. It tells you the signs. tells you all you need to know. So with these turnip greens today, like I said, the moon is waxing, getting bigger. Okay, so that's what we want to encourage growth if I want these to grow back. But it's not the best sign. The best sign further out that I can see is going to be Pisces on the 20th and 21st if we want great growth. Okay, I've cut these today. I'm going to come back on the 20th and cut some and see what the difference is. Also on the 20th, the moon will be almost full. It's still waxing, so that will be the optimal time to do this if I want my turnip greens to grow right back. This is a pure experiment. Okay, guys, this is all just to try, just to see. But I'm going to show you the little patch I've cut. We're going to come back on the 20th. We're going to do it again and see which one fares better. Who knows? Okay. So I have one, two three four that i have pruned and i pruned heavily okay i can get a few more down here but we're going to see how this does okay that's not one plant that's two beside each other again if you want large turnips leave them in the ground you still can pick the leaves off and let it continue to grow hey briscoe we're gonna see how this does and we're gonna come back on the 20th and get some more okay so we're gonna see if this little experiment works planting by the signs now let me show you what to do with these turnip greens. All right, so we have stripped most of the leaves from the stems. I left some of the little pieces. Just take your hand, run it down the stem. Got them in a huge stock pot here outside. I'm gonna fill this up with water. We're gonna clean these. All right, y'all, the best way I can explain to do this is put your hand down in here and start swirling. You want these to come out clean. They look clean, but I promise you, they're not. Just swirl over and over and over. Then we're going to drain these. And I probably will end up freezing these. I've got another batch in the kitchen that I'm going to show you what we're going to do with tonight. All right, so I have sat here for several minutes and done this. Do you see the foam in the water? Do you see the color of the water? Let's see if I can get some. It's green. It's dirty. It's green. 
we're gonna rinse these and take these inside. All right, let's show you how to cook these turnip greens. So I've got my stove eye on, okay, medium high. I've got some olive oil in the bottom, some minced garlic, and now I'm going to put some onion powder. Just a little bit down in there, like that, stir it around. Then next, we're going to add some ham. All right, so everything's sizzling, and right here, I have a frozen piece of ham. I'm just gonna put right down in there. If you had time to thaw it, that's fine. It's a pretty big chunk, okay? This is a huge Dutch oven. I'm gonna let this brown up, thaw out, then we're going to add some chicken broth flavoring, okay? The powder mix, some water, and then our turnip greens. Okay, guys, our ham has cooked. It's, it was already fully cooked, and I just froze it off of a ham that we did. It's been simmering in this, boiling, got minced garlic, onion powder, two cups of water, and just some seasoning of the powdered chicken broth. All that's doing that, and I'm going to put in the turnip greens. All right, guys, I've put my turnip greens in. I have cut it down to simmer. We're going to let this simmer for at least an hour. I'm probably going to do two hours. Just watch your water level in there. Right now, it's pretty high. It'll simmer down. These will be some good greens. We'll see you guys next time on Harmon Homestead.